Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela and in today's video, I am going to be talking about what a really good day in investment banking would look like versus a really bad day. I'm going to be using some of my own experiences as well as experiences that I've seen from other analysts to describe these days. So on a good day or even a typical day, I would have my alarm set for 8 a.m. in the morning. I'd wake up and check my phone first thing in the morning and see what work notifications I had while I had gone to sleep. On a good day, these notifications are mostly just general emails that were sent to everyone, nothing very urgent that I need to respond to immediately, and so I hit the snooze button and go back to sleep for a little bit. I decided to snooze my alarm a couple of times and I officially get up at 8 45 a.m. I quickly brush my teeth, get dressed, and I am walking to the office now. It, it generally took me about 20 to 25 minutes to get to the office by walking. So around 9.30 a.m. I'm now at the office. I start up my computer and I sort through my email inbox. I didn't really see any email notifications come in, and so I decide to ask one of my coworkers if she's free to grab a smoothie with me. Walk upstairs to our company's cafeteria and I order myself a smoothie and also get myself some scrambled eggs. This is about one of the 10% of times where I'll actually have breakfast. At around 10 a.m. I sit back at my desk, I'm sipping my smoothie and I am just checking my emails, eating my breakfast and responding to any social media messages I have on my phone. 11 a.m. rolls around and I have my first call with a client who we're doing a financing for. During this one hour call, I am vigorously taking notes and taking down everything I hear. Call lasts until noon and afterward, I take about the next 10-20 minutes to clean up my notes and then send it around to the entire team. Now, on the mornings of a bad day, fast forward to the night before, I had slept at around 3 a.m. and now I have woken up at 6 a.m. for my first alarm. We have a client meeting today at 9.30 a.m., which means that I'm waking up at 6 a.m. to make any last minute changes that will come through from the managing director. 6 a.m., I wake up, nothing from the managing director, and so I hit the snooze button and continue waking up in 10 minute intervals until I finally get get the email with changes. The email comes through at 6.40 a.m. The changes are relatively light. I know they'll take me about half an hour. My associate is also online and he pings me to make sure that I am aware of these changes. I directly get up from my bed and work on these changes, send them back to the associate for a quick look. And while he's reviewing the materials and making sure that I completed all of the comments from our managing director, I then decide to brush my teeth and quickly get ready for my day. The associate replies with a few little comments back and I take the next 15 minutes to work on it and I send to the managing director for the official sign off. The managing director responds within 10 minutes that we should print the books and that he is good with it and I send it direct to the print shop. It's now 8.30am and I speed walk to our office and I go directly to our print shop to pick up these books that we just printed and I take them back to the office with me. I signal to my associate that I now have the books and I have about 10 minutes to myself to go use the bathroom and get some water before our meeting officially starts with the client and we have to go to the conference room with them. During the meeting, I take these books with me and I also take a pen and a notepad because my primary role during these meetings is to take diligent notes on what the client says and see if they want any follow-up materials. At 9.30 a.m., I'm sitting in the meeting room, I'm taking notes, and the client says that they would like to see some further materials that expand on some of the analyses that we've already done. After the meeting's over at around 11 a.m., I have a quick debrief with my associate on the work that needs to be done just to make sure that we're both coordinated on it. At around 11.30am, I am back at my desk and my emails have really built up over the time that I was in the meeting. I am on about three really active projects, one of which we just had a meeting for, the second of which is a bake-off, and the third which is a live deal. To quickly explain what a bake-off is, is, let's say Amazon wanted to acquire a new company, they might host a bake-off in which they invite five investment banks to pitch their ideas and they'll decide which investment bank they want to hire from there. Bake-offs are usually a lot of work. 
and they include decks that are really long and include a lot of analyses because every bank wants to make the best impression and win this deal. And a live deal is a deal that has already been won. This means that the client will be paying this investment bank for this deal and these deals often include a lot of work, there's a lot of urgency with everything. So in the afternoon on a good day, it's around 12.30 p.m. I decide to head out with a few of the other analysts to grab Chipotle nearby. At 1 p.m. I'm back with my Chipotle and I decide to sit at the conference room for the next half an hour to 45 minutes just chatting with the other analysts and seeing what they're up to. At around 2 p.m. I'm back at my desk. I've just received some comments from a deck that I have sent my associate from the night before. This deck is for a marketing book and what this means is that it is a deal that is non-live. It means that we are pitching to the client. We haven't officially won a deal nor do we know if the client actually wants to do a deal. We're just offering them ideas to keep up the relationship and in case they want to hire us at any point. So it's essentially free work and work that really isn't that urgent compared to bake-offs or live deals. I decided to take my time with these comments across the next two hours and really triple check my work before before sending it again to the associate to sign off at at 5 p.m. So the next hour or so after that, I'm mostly just on my phone and wondering what I should eat for dinner. At 12 p.m., I begin working on the requests for my live project because those always take priority over non-live ones since the client is already going to be paying us. For this project, we've already won a financing and so we are going to be working on a presentation for the investors who will be investing in this company. I just got comments back from the client as well as a few other ones from my managing director. So I spent the next two hours heads down working on those and then sending it to my associate for a quick look. As soon as I send it across to my associate, at 2 p.m. I directly turned to my Bake Off project because I also got a lot of comments on those and that is an equally urgent project because the Bake Off is tomorrow. An hour later, as I'm working through those comments, I receive an email that I've been staffed on a new project. This new project is for a meeting in three days and I immediately asked the director who's on it when they want to catch up on it. They suggested we catch up later today and so I check his calendar and see that he's available at 6 p.m. and I send out a calendar invite to the team. At 3.30 p.m., my associate on our live project finally gets back to me and tells me that he is good with it and has sent it along to our director for his sign-off. I quickly send that and turn back to my bake-off project again. 4 p.m. rolls around, the director sent this new deck to the client and they want to get on a call ASAP and so I need to send out the calendar invite for that as well. So I send it out and I join the call and I'm avidly taking notes again. I have to push off the comments from my bake-off for now. The call ends up finishing at 6 p.m. and I have to go direct to the meeting for my new project. And again, I'm taking notes on what they want for this new meeting. It doesn't seem too bad. The meeting is in only three days and they want a first draft by tomorrow. We finish up that meeting in about half an hour at 6.30 p.m. and I go and sit back at my desk. I still have work for my three original projects as well as my new project. On a good day at around 6 p.m., since I have so much free time, I decide to be the one who orders Seamless for everyone. So each of us get about $25 for Seamless to order and we can combine our orders and make one big group one using all of our budgets. At around 7.30 p.m., the food is here and myself and everyone who got food also gathers in the conference room and we all eat together for the next half an hour or so and just talk. At around 8 p.m., I am back at my desk. I'm going through any remaining emails. My associate had just gotten back to me on the deck that I sent him and he said it looked good and to just send direct to the managing director. And so I quickly checked it over again and sent it through. It's now around 9 p.m. and I don't have anything much left to do. Most of the managing directors and directors and even some of the associates have left by this point and I decide to just head home. I arrive back at home around 9 30 p.m. I go and take a shower and I'm pretty much just in bed on social media watching YouTube and then I go to sleep at 12 30 a.m. Now on a bad day at 6 p.m., I ask one of my friends if they can include me on the order and I just choose something quickly. I continue working through all of my projects and the comments on them and when 7 p.m. rolls around and the food is here, I quickly just get it, bring it to my desk and continue working on all of my projects, juggling them back and forth. 
It's now 3 a.m. and the only project that I have left is the bake-off. I've still been getting comments on it all night and my associate and executive director are actually both up because this is a really important bake-off that's for the next morning. I get my final set of comments at 3.30 a.m. and the executive director says that I should directly send it to our managing director afterward when I am done. They're pretty light comments and I finish up around 4 a.m., send it, and I am on an Uber back. When I'm back around 4 a.m., I am too tired to shower and I decide to directly go to bed because I know I'll have to be up early again the next morning. It takes me about half an hour to actually fall asleep because there's so much adrenaline pumping through me because of the super busy day. As for how frequent both of these days occur, I'd say these good days and bad days are around 10% of the time and everything else falls right in between. On a good week, you'll be working around 60 hours while on a bad week, you be working over 100 hours. And if you want more one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, you should go check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash angelasunx3. As always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Please remember to give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out a lot. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!